What's up YouTube? I'm Brett from Rants R Us. As always guys, if you enjoy our content, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. We're on the road to 1000 and we hope you guys will help us get there. And as always guys, I want to mention that uh, as of right now, content creators here on YouTube are having troubles getting their videos out there to the public. So if you do enjoy our content, please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so that you'll be the first ones to be able to see our videos once they're uploaded. Okay, Season 2, Episode 6 of The Mandalorian. Um, I have been online uh, all day. I watched the video last night, and uh, I was going to do one last night, but it was like 3 in the morning when I actually got to see it, so I was like, I'll eh, hold off till today. Um, a lot of people online are saying this was a great episode. To me, it was kind of boring. And I'll get to the reasons why I felt like this wasn't the best episode that we've had this far in The Mandalorian. It wasn't like it was bad. It's just, it just wasn't, at least to me, up to par with some of the other ones. But I'll get to that a little bit later in this video. But I'll start off with the things that I liked. Compared to other video, uh, to other episodes of uh, The Mandalorian, this was really action-packed. This kind of reminded me of Episode 2. I believe it was Episode 2 with the Ice Spiders, where, you know, it was just action, 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 all the, almost all the way through. Um, I enjoyed that aspect of it. I, I thought, man, this is uh, the way The Mandalorian should be. This is kind of the life you would expect from a bounty hunter. So I enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, another one is, you know, I enjoyed getting to see Boba Fett in action. You know, we've, they've, ever since The Mandalorian started, there's been this knowing kind of rumor that Boba Fett was eventually probably going to show up on The Mandalorian. And, you know, in the very first episode, we were able to see that he does actually appear. Uh, but it wasn't until this episode that we got to actually see him in action. And he did not disappoint. Um, he was excellent. Uh, the fight scenes were just amazing. He was just taking stormtroopers out left and right. And the way he presented himself um, in the episode uh, really was really neat. Like, I, I thought it was... He didn't appear to be like the douchebag that I was expecting to get. The one that was kind of in the originals, the kind of cocky gunslinger that was, you know, felt like he could take on the world. This was a more reserved, um, a more uh, classful uh, Boba Fett, honorable Boba Fett, and I enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, but Phoenix Shand, I was... <laughs> Look, we all knew that she was going to be coming back in one form or another. You know, at the end of, uh, I forget which episode it was in season one, where you see Boba Fett uh, coming up to her um, and uh, her dead body. Uh, we knew she was going to be coming back. Uh, but I felt like uh, her in season one wasn't really given much to work with. She had some good moments uh, in her one episode in season one, but she wasn't really that memorable, not even really that memorable where most people would remember her name. Um, but, you know, we should have known that something was going to go on about her later on because they just talked way too much about her backstory, about how great of a sniper she was, and about how important it was for them to take her down. Um, and how danger I mean just literally dangerous where she could kill people from miles and miles away like then you could just couldn't even get close enough to her but either way um, I enjoyed getting to see her I still have a lot of questions about her and Boba Fett um, but overall I tell you she really could stand out there with Boba Fett you really get to see okay she's not just a sniper She's someone that's just really handy. She's just a gunslinger. And she can handle herself with a gun or with basically any kind of um, any kind of fighting imaginable she can handle herself with. So I enjoy getting to see her. Um, besides, the, besides that, the Mandalorian 
probably my biggest complaint with this show when it comes to the Mandalorian is that the interactions between Grogu and the Mandalorian has been so poor. Like, there's been hardly any interactions at all. He'll hand him that little round thing, and that's about it, and, you know, make like a passing comment to him. But he's never really showed the love and affection uh, towards him that um, that would really make me really enjoy Mando. Um, but in this episode, he kind of changed from the very beginning. You get to see him, you know, really excited about Grogu's new powers, about how, you know, he's basically acting like the father figure that Ahsoka Tano was talking about in the previous episode where that, you know, he is, he's not going to leave Grogu behind. He's going to, you know, help him out as much as he can. And you know that when the time comes when there's a Jedi that will take Grogu, there's going to be this instance where I can see maybe the Mandalorian going along with him to help with his training instead of just leaving him behind. Uh, but the interactions between the two were so much better. It made the ending a little bit more heartbreaking than what it would have been without that initial beginning scene in this episode. Um, but, um, and another thing is, is um, Boba Fett taking out the dropships. Um, that was another cool little thing with Boba Fett. That was, I mean, it was cool. It shows you how much this show has just grown in budget. Uh, Boba Fett just, I mean, he, you see him, he's, you knew he was going to shoot that missile. Uh, you know, him just standing on that edge and watching those drop ships in the back taking off. And he just, you know, shoots that missile and then ends up taking out both of them. That looked amazing. Amazing. That was probably one of the best scenes in Mandalorian so far. At least one of the more memorable scenes where you just go, wow, that was really cool. Like, that was amazing. Like, I mean, I felt that way when I saw a, saw Ahsoka for the first time. But as far as, like, an action scene, there's really never been anything that close to it. Except for maybe when he's in that um, fighting arena and those guys pull all those guns on him. And, of course, he hits that button and... All those, uh, you know, he kills all those guys with all of his different weaponry. But other than that, that scene with Boba Fett taking out those dropships was pretty amazing. Um, the dark, uh, those dark troopers look pretty cool. Um, they're going to really, like, there's something that I'm actually really excited about for the future. Um, I want to see what Moff Gideon really is intending for them. Uh, I know there's more that he's got lined up for them other than just kidnapping, you know, Grogu. Like, he's going to set those things off on the Mandalorian, and I would love to see how Mando is able to uh, withstand that. He's going to need a Boba Fett. He's going to need a Ahsoka Tano. He's going he's gonna to need a Cara Dune. He's going to need those people with him to be able to take care of 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 those uh of those dark troopers and that's going to be a really interesting episode when that takes place i feel like they're already kind of setting that up for like the season finale uh where he's getting all of his allies together to take on you know to go get grogu um but yeah overall that was pretty good uh boba fett like i said i cannot get past the fact of boba fett's honorable behavior uh, you know, he's a bounty hunter, and I get it, Mandalorians, they have this sense of honor, and, and uh, but a sense of honor is different than being um, a good, decent human being. Uh, Boba Fett seems like he's that. Uh, you know, in just that brief little moments with him and Mando talking, um, I really got to like Boba Fett's character because to me his character showed in that one instance something that I've been wanting from Mando for almost now two seasons you know you really get to see okay you got the honor but then you got the good decent person but it's all because Boba Fett doesn't have a helmet on all the time I think Mando would be that way if they would give Mando more scenes but they don't they they keep him behind that helmet 
and he just makes like little one-liners here and there. Uh, but the fight between, uh, or the supposed almost fight between uh, Boba Fett and Mando was something that I was looking forward to. I was disappointed that they didn't get to it, but I actually did enjoy the little standoff there that they had where there was Boba Fett, that Phoenix Shan, pointing uh, you know, her gun at that baby. I was curious of whether or not she would have pulled that trigger. Uh, you know, because after at the end of the day, he is still, you know, a, a baby. But I almost kind of thought at that very moment that that was kind of a wasted moment when it come to Phoenix Shan. Because if Boba Fett couldn't get past that little force field that Boba, uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, Grogu was in, there was no way that bullet was probably going to penetrate that either. Like, so I don't see how that was really as dangerous of a scene as what they were making it out to be. But overall, it was it was pretty cool. Like I said, Boba Fett being honorable, I enjoyed that. I'm excited to see Boba Fett in the future. I'm excited to see if maybe Boba Fett will get uh, Mando to take off his helmet. Um, you know, because and it's to me, you see progress in the in Mando because you know he sees Boba Fett and then he asks him, "Are you a Mandalorian?" You know, before he would have just assumed that if you have your helmet off you're not a real Mandalorian and that's where he would have gone from that but this go around he asks you know are you a Mandalorian uh, so that's showing that he's got some kind of form of progression when it comes to his mindset and thought process when it comes to uh, what is a real Mandalorian and so I'm excited about that um, let's see what other things um, Bill Burr look Bill Burr returning um, as Mayfield is going to be great. Everything that Bill Burr does is great. Even, you know, his little episode in The Mandalorian was one of my favorite ones. Um, he's just got this, I don't know, you want to talk about a, a character that is like an assassin, a, 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 one of those uh, bounty hunter-like characters uh, or someone that has the mindset of a bounty hunter would be a Bill Burr. Like, he's just got that attitude down completely. He's got the attitude, uh, Bill Burr has the attitude that I thought uh, uh, Boba Fett would have. But, I, and like I said, I was shocked that Boba Fett doesn't. Uh, but Bill Burr is going to be, he's going to be a guy that I can see him Helping the Mandalorian, but uh, Armando, and but also betraying him as well. So I'm interested to in see exactly how that goes. Um, uh, Grogu throwing those stormtroopers around. Uh, talk about a really cool scene. Um, I think it was I forget what is the name of that video game. Is it The Force Unleashed? Uh, come up on I think it was like uh, PlayStation Three. Uh, it had you, you, you had your star killer, you had all these uh, force powers where you just chunk people all around. That scene reminded me a lot of that. Uh, it shows you just uh, what maybe Ahsoka Tano was feeling in Grogu, his power level, uh, because when she states how powerful he is, um, it just it, it makes you excited for the future because you see what Grogu is capable of. And what we might be uh, getting to see in the near future. I mean, he right now, look, you, you add a few more years to Grogu or a little bit more training, you might have someone that could probably take on the best of anybody. That's how strong he is. He's already hitting the mark that what a young Yoda would have hit by now. So, I mean, must be a really Force-sensitive species with some really, really... Uh, strong force ability uh, that they're just born with that they don't even have to be taught that they're just born with so I'm excited about that um, I'm excited to find out if Grogu turns to the dark side you know there was that moment where Ahsoka Tano brings up to Mando about she's seen uh, what attachments do to Jedi of course she's referring to Anakin Skywalker her master um, and I, I thought you know, I remember in my last uh, review for 
season four. I mean, I mean for uh, episode, what is this? Uh, five, episode five. I thought that was kind of a throwaway line because I was like, that's kind of comparing apples to oranges because Anakin was spent the good portion of his early life not as a Jedi, where Grogu was raised as a Jedi. So I thought that's kind of like comparing apples and oranges. But now I'm starting to kind of get a little bit of a sense of what she was actually referring to, where there's something in in uh, uh, Grogu that could easily turn to the dark side. Like he was throwing those stormtroopers around just for the fun of it, and he was force choking them. I mean, that's that's usually a power you only see for a uh, you know someone that's either teetering on the dark side or is a dark side user. So I thought that was actually really kind of a cool scene. I enjoyed how Moff Gideon was just enjoying that aspect of it. He could see uh, not only uh, Grogu's power, but he could see what he potentially could be as a weapon uh, in the dark side. So I'm kind of I'm 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 cool I'm I'm cool with what they did with that. I'm interested to see how they continue that on a little bit further. Uh, Moth Gideon's just a great bad guy. I mean, what can you possibly say? Look, he just got that way about him, kind of like a Darth Vader presence. I mean, something that Kylo Ren could never get in a million years. Uh, Moth Gideon's just got that authority. Like, he's he is what the sequel trilogy needed and unfortunately didn't have. And I'm really... Uh, really makes me sad to even be able to say that because the Mandalorian they struck gold when they got a bad guy that was of his caliber um, And another thing Moff Gideon if Moff Gideon is just going to use Grogu as a test subject He made that comment of when it come to his dark saber of you're not ready for such things yet so is he planning on actually maybe taking Grogu and training him to be kind of like a Darth Vader like figure someone that he can control and point in a specific direction and take on um, you know uh, other force users or maybe even you know Mando himself I mean you know depending upon whether or not he's saved in season two uh, we could be actually seeing a Darth Grogu and that sounds stupid uh, just because of the name, but it would actually be a really cool uh, way for him to take on Mando and uh, You know, maybe have like a fast forward a couple more years or something in the future where we see You know him uh, more in control of his powers and more towards the dark side Or I'm actually even kind of curious that maybe you know that beacon he set off uh, was uh, on a, on a, a Tython was actually um, a force user that is a dark side force user might actually get a hold of him. So, I mean, that could be something also in the future. But that's all the good I've got. Um, the bad. <laughs> well, one, one of the things that I disliked the most was the build up for Tython, but yet it didn't show anything. Uh, we just got a rock formation and maybe a little bit of the landscape, and that's it. But even the rock formation wasn't really even that cool, the Jedi rock formation, as it just looked like, uh, I don't know, there was a big center rock that looked like an egg and a bunch of little creeping rocks around it that kind of looked like fingers coming out of the ground. Um, it didn't show anything. It didn't show any, like, Jedi runes or anything that we could see that really stood out that made made it where we could kind of you know look in the background and try to figure out you know little hints towards this and that or little uh, you know side things that you know Easter eggs you could say that would really get people interested um, it didn't have any of that and so I was very disappointed about that I was also very disappointed that Grogu uh, during Grogu's meditation that he was not able to, uh, we were not able to see what he saw. We were not able to see if there was any force users, if somebody caught on to his signal, or if, um, or you know, what he saw during that meditation thing. I'm just curious as to know what, uh, why they didn't give us a little bit more of a, I guess like a little Easter egg or a little something to come, but they gave us nothing. 
They, he was just in a force field, and there was nothing that Mando could do, do to get to him, and that was it. So I was a little disappointed by that. Um, another thing was, how did um, Boba Fett bring back Phoenix Shan? Um, you know, Phoenix Shan shows that she's part, I guess, a cyborg now, I guess you could say. But when did Boba Fett turn into a, a scientist? Like, he's a bounty hunter. You can't tell me that Mando could have done that. So, how did Boba Fett be able to do that? Especially being on a planet that doesn't have a lot of resources. How was he capable of acquiring such ability to kind of bring her back from the dead? I thought that was something that was really left unexplained. And when she just opened that little door on her stomach and showed her all the wiring, I was like, okay, what is that supposed to even show? Like, you got to give us a little bit more than that. I felt like that's something that a lot of people today are missing uh, in their reaction videos when it comes to um, uh, this episode because they never talk about how, I don't know, silly that is. Um, at least that it wasn't explained um, or that they wanted even more explanation towards it. I was really disappointed by that. Like, I, I know I can't be the only one that thought of that, um, but apparently I'm one of the only ones that's, at least on YouTube, that's thinking about it. Um, that's why you should always check out Rants or Us, guys. We're above the fray. <laughs> but uh, another thing is, um, probably the thing that probably made me feel so bad about this episode was just how worthless stormtroopers are. Okay, a few episodes back I complained about how terrible shot Stormtroopers were and how that joke has turned into like a whole new thing about how they're just completely useless. Um, Boba Fett and Phoenix Shan literally was taking out Stormtroopers left and right, uh, not even having to really hide behind anything. They're not Force users. They should be able to be taken down by blaster fire just like anybody else. But the stormtroopers were just completely useless. You could have brought in a drop ship of a million stormtroopers and I think they would still lost. Uh, they don't pose any form of threat in the Star Wars universe anymore. Um, seeing platoons of them arrive do not, does not put fear or give fans this, oh my gosh, Phil, what on earth is going to happen next? Like, how are they going to get out of this? You think, if there could be a million of them, you think, well, Mando will just shoot his way through them. I mean, that's how bad of a shot these people are and how little of villains that these stormtroopers have become. Which is a shame because I was a fan of the Clone Wars where they actually meant something to be uh, a clone trooper. They were actually powerful. They were actually capable. These stormtroopers are not capable. They're terrible. They're just like, they just pick people up off the street and like, you know... Don't even give them any training. Just send them out and, you know, let them be fodder, you know, to, uh, for, you know, enemies. I mean, that's 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 basically all they are. Um, another thing is, um, uh, oh, man. I was curious about this one thing, um, and I didn't know if I was going to bring it up in this video. But there was a moment that... I kind of questioned Mando and it was the moment where he didn't want to give up Boba Fett's armor to Boba Fett and he was risking the child's life by not doing that that whole situation could have been handled so much better if he would have just been Boba Fett would have said hey I've got Phoenix Shan up there she's gonna shoot the kid if you don't give me the the uh, the armor Right at that moment, I expected uh, Mando to just hand the armor over, but he didn't. Uh, it wasn't that easy. He was risking the child's life. Which makes me really question, which does he care more about? His Mandalorian on honor? Or does he care more about Grogu? And that was a moment, that was the first moment that I actually questioned whether or not he, which one he cares about the most. Um, I still feel like he's kind of a, in a gray area a little bit. I think that moment really showed that part of him where he's struggling between his Mandalorian honor 
in protecting that, protecting his traditions, over protecting Grogu. It made me think he's probably not ready to be that father figure for Grogu. Um, another thing is, why do you need uh, Mayfield when you got Fennec Shan? Uh, last I checked, Mayfield, they're going to have to break Mayfield out of prison so that he can go help uh, Mando find um, Baby Yoda, which was taken by those uh, dark troopers. Like, I mean, I did not uh, really understand why you need two sharpshooters. Wouldn't you need somebody that was qualified in maybe a different way than just someone that is... Um, uh, Someone that's just too sharp to her. What what are they gonna do? What how could they really truly truly just help you? Like I mean, I would get I would have got more Cara Dune or somebody like that um, over Mayfield in that situation. I'm excited to see Bill Burr again, but I don't really see if you're really trying to put a crack team together. Like why would you get two people that have the exact same abilities? seems kind of pointless like wouldn't you need like a weapons expert a sniper uh you know explosive expert something along those lines uh a fighter pilot something something but no he wants to get two snipers because that's going to help him when he's attacking a ship like yeah i i don't a star destroyer or whatever they are like that's going to that seems like a pointless endeavor at that point so i kind of don't really understand that um uh, I didn't understand, and, and I thought it was one of the coolest scenes of the episode was when Moff Gideon took out uh, the Razor Crest uh, from orbit. But at the same time, the first question that came in my mind as soon as it happened was, why didn't he take out Boba Fett's ship too? That way they would have been stuck on Tython. And both those ships were blown to pieces, so there's no way they would have been able to have uh, even called for help or uh, or even piece those things back together because there's nothing left of the Razor Crest. So, I'm like, why didn't you take out both ships? I mean, they're all right there. It wasn't like, you know, they were hidden somewhere. They were all in that very vicinity. They could have just taken out both easily. Um, so, I was like, to me, that was one thing that I was just like, oh, what are they doing? Like, why? Why not just take out both those things leave them stranded on that let them start off from that point of view in the next episode whether they would have to try to either work together or something along those lines and then that being the um uh, sorry there was a mosquito there <laughs> uh either uh, had them work together and that been the reason why that uh boba fett would agree to help uh in the mission to save baby yoda but instead, uh, you know, they kind of made it, well, you gave me back my honor, and I told you I'd protect the kid or whatever. Uh, I was like, okay, that, that's great and all, but I would have much rather seen them stranded on Tython and then them try to work together and then build a relationship through that. I would have enjoyed that a little bit better than him just getting in Boba Fett's ship and taking off in it. But that's my take in it, guys. Um... Let me know if I left anything off. Let me know what y'all think of this episode. Um, if I had to rate it, I would say it was a 5 out of 10. Wasn't my favorite episode. Yes, it had a lot of fighting. Uh, a lot of action scenes to it. But it, I don't know, it involved stormtroopers that just couldn't hit the backside of a barn. So, like, I don't know. I don't know exactly how great even the action was. Uh, I'm glad that there was action. I'm glad there was something to do and see on this. But besides, but I don't feel like there was ever any danger that um, Grogu was going to die or that uh, Mando was going to be taken down. I just didn't feel that in this episode. But anyways, guys, let me know what y'all think. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. And take care.